with T to the water. Hey guys, it's your boy T to the water. Hi, how are you? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Okay, so today you're gonna get to see the whole part one of my new album. Um, I haven't named it yet. So, <laughs> right now I'm just practicing choreography. This is like day two of practicing. You guys saw, I mean, you guys heard the open number yesterday. So let's not. Oh, there's a certain way you gotta do this. Yes, yes, yes. Dream World was sponsored to you by Google Play. Play the music you love to hear any and every time you want to hear it. Hey Google, let's start the party. Thank <laughs> you. 
felt like this would be impossible to affect people's heart. My heart is constantly pulling me back home to the people who tried to change me. I lived in my own world where I was a prima donna. I'll be a diva for you. Well, it was a unique time where my dreams filled my empty cup to the brim. I was sure I could think the impossible. There's no boundaries for me. Going forward, finding out who I am, reaching for things that would be hard to obtain. Neon colors and bright lights. I dreamed of New York City. There, I would find my fortune. The city would be my friend. Truly, I believe only a slice of big apple pie would set me free. Only if I reached the city lights. Oh. to get what you got
imagine loving the unknown every day seems like a different shade of light. I'm still battling the old me. My light will shine bright. I see you. I think there is a power that connects all of us. That's my favorite part about you. Who can lie? Don't start with me. The world begins to break right in front of us. Things a storm. But don't get me wrong. I was killing it. The sacrifice was being less social. I don't think I get out much. I don't care about anything. Thank you. 
exciting. so much for tuning in please like share and subscribe to this youtube channel and make sure to check out our merchandise store and buy some of the new cool items that we have available for purchase Justin Ross, and I'm in the Dietetics Program. My favorite part of the Dietetics Program... skating through the air. That was a familiar sound for me during my high school years. It represented thoughts that I'd make it to the Olympics someday, and I was as qualified as any 16-year-old girl could be. I was going to wear that medal proudly around my neck and taste the success of the moment. That is, until everything I loved, which was my dream to run, started to disappear day by day. Out of nowhere, I started having these episodes where my heart would start pounding through my chest, and I couldn't get my heart rate down. I eventually started to vomit every day for over a year and a half straight due to an overpounding and irregular heartbeat. When my health began to fail, a heavy sadness came over me because it was hard to run. It eventually got so bad that I had to turn down all my full-ride scholarships to college, and that was really hard. As I looked down at the pile of scholarships one day, tears ran down my face because of the pain of feeling like a failure and what I hoped to be a clear future for me. When I first shared this story, it came to me suddenly how I lost what I loved the most due to a bad diet. Now that was momentarily an embarrassing experience for me with knowing that I've been looked at as this physically fit woman who had it all together with her diet and can do 300 burpees, 500 push-ups, and 1,000 squats in one workout session, which is a true story. I'm used to telling people heavy statistics, like every 10 seconds, someone dies from diabetes, which is also a true story. And as a matter of fact, if I use this room to represent that statistics, 
15 of you would have died already unable to hear the end of this speech. It makes you think, doesn't it? Why would you want to wait until you're dying to finally think about your health? See, my health didn't matter to me until it started to prevent me from my dreams. My reckless habits of eating finally caught up with me. And then I realized it doesn't matter what dreams you may have, you won't experience them with a deteriorating body from eating like a zombie. So, do you think you should become more educated on how foods are affecting your body? Are you paying attention to how maybe tired or constipated you get after eating gluten? Have you researched what herbs you could be taking to reverse the effects of your bad diet? And are you comfortable with totally relying on doctors and the pharmaceutical industry to have the answers for you if you do get sick? See, when I encountered my health problems, I was uneducated. And unfortunately, I was left in the hands of doctors to figure it out, and that didn't turn out so good for me. I remember it clearly. It was 1996 on a windy Wednesday afternoon in April. I finally went to go see a cardiovascular specialist concerning the decline of my health. I walked into the office, looked up, and saw a picture of him on the wall and thought, hmm, that's interesting. He has a picture of him running track on the wall. So he's a doctor and he runs track? Oh, he's going to understand my story. He's going to relate. So I asked him to confirm, and he said, yeah, he did run track. So I thought, I'm in good hands. But then later I realized he never even asked me what was important, which was my diet. So I never had a true chance at healing. Man. I would have loved to tell him how I woke up every morning to flaming hot chips with cheese and following that, a delightful mouth-watering lunch that included an ice cream sundae with extra, extra Oreos, M&Ms, and Snickers, and a pizza. I would have found joy in telling him about my delicious and well-deserving gourmet dinner, that greasy cheeseburger with extra-large fries. I thought I had worked out good enough to deserve this kind of diet. But nah, he didn't ask me about that. He just prescribed me some medication that I had no clue of. Perhaps it contained the usual side effects, heart palpitation, memory problems, muscle weakness, feeling irritable, constipation, blurred vision, or maybe even death. The Journal of American Medical Association says that people are five times more likely to die from prescription medication than from drug abuse from overdose and heroin combined. It makes you wonder who the real drug dealers are. And now I know that living healthy enough to stay away from prescription medication can save 2,000 Americans a week from dying. By the way, another 15 of you have just died from a preventable disease and are unable to hear the end of this speech. And more than likely, you were on medication. I remember going to see a doctor about five years ago for back pain and he immediately prescribed me pain medication without even asking me how much water I drank. I wonder if he knew that dehydration sometimes causes back pain. Now that I think about it, he didn't even ask me, was I pregnant? Now, there are some exceptional doctors out there. But what I want to tell you is that you must take responsibility for your own health. I continue to struggle in my health in many ways. And then one day, I was talking to a friend named Ed at the time. And I wondered to myself, what would happen if people didn't need to be healed because they never got sick? Was that possible, I thought to myself, because I was tired of being sick. It was that trigger question that caused me to look at my life, my health, and my future differently. It was that question that provoked me to seek the knowledge that took me from flaming hots to Kanye and pepper shots. <laughs> I wish someone would have told me then what I'm about to tell you now. Choosing not to think about your health is costing you everything, whether you know it or not. It may not affect you now, but it'll surely cost you later. Don't wait until you're dying 
to think about living. As I listen to people's countless dreams, ambitions, goals, and expectations, I can't help myself from asking, what will you do to keep your body alive long enough to experience these dreams you have? When I start to question them about their diet, their physical exercise routine, and their sleep cycles, they wonder how I went from listening to their dreams to asking them questions about their health. It took me 10 years to get over the horrifying symptoms I experienced from a careless, walking dead diet. But the more I learned about ingredients, vitamin therapy, herbs, and how different foods and exercises affected my body, the more empowered I became. And you can become empowered too. Because of my diet change and my physical routine, I can now outperform myself versus 20 years ago. I've gotten stronger, healthier, and I have reversed my aging. I stopped putting crappy fuel in my body, and I transformed my mind to think about my health every single day. This is a picture of me after three kids and open stomach surgery. I, like some of you, have had to overcome many obstacles, like being ripped open by an almost 10-pound baby boy and cut open on my stomach from top to bottom. And it's a miracle I can still do 25 pull-ups and a six-minute plank. But here's the question. How healthy can you get? Can you see yourself with a flatter stomach, a few extra muscles, get into them jeans you want to get into? I know all about that. And running around live, vibrant, and full of energy with your family? What would the healthiest version of you look like? See, these are questions and tough decisions that must be addressed now. You don't want to wait until you're sick or get diagnosed with diabetes before you think your health is a serious enough issue. By the way, Another 15 of you have just died from diabetes and are unable to hear the end of this speech. As a matter of fact, if I really use this room to represent that statistics of someone dying from diabetes every 10 seconds, the whole room would be dead in less than one hour. Many of these preventable diseases can be overturned if we just become more proactive. The health fitness revolution claims that 70% of Americans will be diagnosed with a chronic condition and children will die before their parents for the first time in history. Now this could be because Americans still spend $110 billion on fast food and drink 44 gallons of soda per year. If this continues, we can expect to see disease increase in our children and parents who won't be around long enough to see their grandkids being born. I had a friend tell me she walked into a coffee shop one day and saw an overweight man who she guessed to be over 300 pounds with an oxygen tank order a vanilla latte with four extra pumps of vanilla. CNN reports some coffee drinks have over 20 teaspoons of sugar in it. Now, why would a person who don't have enough oxygen in his body do something like this to his health? It's simple. Not thinking. But before you judge him, have you thought about how much sugar and chemicals that destroy the brain were in the bread, donuts, pasta, pizza, hot dogs, cookies, and juices you may be consuming on a day-to-day -day basis? Think about it. Think about it. By the way, another 10 of you just fell dead from diabetes, and unfortunately, I'm losing you by the seconds. So let me hurry up and end with this. I don't want this message to ring in your head not one day later from this moment. My mom and grandma were both diagnosed with cancer. 
Only my mom survived. And I'm happy that I'm impacting her today with this very message. And nothing will bring me greater joy than for it to influence you the same way. I know that if you don't think about your health now, you'll opt into thinking about it when it's not on your own terms, and that will perhaps come with consequences. You'll be taking responsibility not just for yourself, but also a generation that has grossly fallen into the trap of bad habits that we have set for them as a standard. I want you to do something. Go get a food diary. Write down everything you've eaten for the last few days. Look at it and think about the changes you're going to make. You can make changes just like I did. Start seeking knowledge, like why you should drink apple cider vinegar every day. Start reading the ingredients, and when it says corn fructose syrup or hydrogenated oils, put it back on the shelf and look for something healthier. Do you want to live is the question. And if yes, then wake up and start thinking. I told you that every 10 seconds, someone dies from diabetes. What I want you all to do with me, if you don't mind, is do a countdown from 10. And in those 10 seconds, while someone else is out there dying from a preventable disease, you're going to make the choice in those 10 seconds to live and to run the race that you was meant to run for your future. This countdown is a sign that you're going to finally think into how you can become the best version of yourself you've ever been. But before we count, I have to say that I am grateful to be here with you today while you make this great decision. And you have all been an impressive and an astonishing audience. Now, I want you to count with me together. Let's activate. Come on. Ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, boom! Wow, isn't that neat? Focus, decide what deserves you. Step towards what's worth your time and energy. This is Taiwan, and I'm signing out. Taz.